Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Nina Ribena's Art Journal Prompts and More. It's May week one and so time for a new mood board and this is the mood board that Elaine Gardner um, has put together for us for this month. Another lovely mood board, thanks ever so much Elaine for, for, for doing this. Um, now, you can interpret this in any way you like and you know you've already seen now we're sort of five months into these mood boards um, and you can see how differently they get interpreted by um, each individual person so many wonderful wonderful ideas now it might be the color scheme that um, inspires you it might be the images um, you don't have to use them all by any means so for instance you might want to do just a page of, of dandelions which is absolutely fine um, it might be something to do with with the birds that um, inspires you um, or you know the the weathered wood here might give you sort of like that old vintagey feel it's completely open to interpretation um, so you know please feel free to take um, a, a screenshot of this of course as always I will put it in the photo album named mood boards in the Facebook group um, you'll also find it at the top of the page as well in the announcements um, and I'll also show this image for you again at the end of the video. I've decided I'm going to be working in this journal here today. This is a journal I made um, in February, March, um, this time last year. Um, again, it was for one of the recycle, repurpose, reuse prompts. Um, and this is what it looks like. It's full of junk pages. I just love this. I've done a few pages um, already. Um, this is one of the pages I did where I um, used a heart that um, was cut out from um, baby wipes um, it had glue all over it and so I've highlighted that with ink of gold I love that really really pretty most of the pages are um, distress inks I, I think um, then we've got this double page spread here um, again I've got um, a video showing how I made this and I'll leave the links to all of these pages including how I made the journal in the description box below so I've got this double page spread here I think that's really really pretty really quirky really whimsical and then I think um, the only other page I've done is is this one here and this was a collaged um, page and um, again I think done on um, a distress oxide background this is the spread that I'm going to be working on today I'm taking inspiration from the birds in the mood board I've got birds nesting in the tiles just outside my bedroom window we've got blue tits there um, and so that's my inspiration I'm going to put a bird I think on um, this middle section um, here. Now I'm just popping a piece of deli paper behind my page to stop any of the gesso that I'm going to use next getting on the page behind it. Um, I'm using this deco art um, bird image, you've seen me use this before, and I'm just using some gesso just to blank out the colour that I've got going on in the background and whoops a daisy I've just moved my stencil but you know that's that's fine we can we can live with that. Um, so giving this as I say a good coat of gesso which will give me a base to work on. Now I've decided to use Neocolor 2's to colour in my bird today. These are the water soluble variety and I'm just adding some um, colour to my image. Um, I've taken the inspiration from the blue tits that are nesting as I've said outside my bedroom window. They come back every year and it's just wonderful to have them. Um, Louis will quite often perch himself on the windowsill because they are very very vocal and I'm absolutely sure that if he could get to them then he probably would um, you know as cats do so I'm not trying to get this to look like a, a blue tit but you know that's where the inspiration has come from and um, you know I'm clearly taking inspiration from the green um, that's in the mood board as well so I'm just laying some colour down and shortly you'll see me blend this with um, a paintbrush just to activate those lovely colours so I'm just applying um, various shades I've got blues I've got greens I've got the yellow going on there that you you can see you saw me apply some white as well to the head um, just so that I get a, a good blend and here we go I'm just coming in now with my paintbrush um, not too saturated I'm just trying to um, activate these lovely colors um, then I shall dry this with my heat tool and I'll apply more of the um, Neo Colours over the top just to develop the intensity of the colours. I just really, really look the, uh, like the look that you get by doing it this way.
can see I've dried my page and I'm just coming in now and adding more colour um, which I'm blending with my finger and this just adds a wonderful wonderful vibrancy to the bird. Um, now you know me by now you know I just keep going and going and going you know I could have stopped here and that would have been fine but you know I never do that do I? <laughs> now as far as what water soluble wax crayons go there are lots of different brands on the market you've got the um, neo colours that I'm using here these are as I say are the water soluble ones um, you've got the distress crayons you've got Dina Wakely scribble sticks um, what else is though the primas the prima um, water soluble wax crayons are absolutely lovely as well my um, advice would be you do not need them all as I say I've got four sets I think and um, it's ridiculous because they all do pretty much the same thing but my favourites by far are the Neo Colour 2s here um, and the Primas. The Prima ones come in the most gorgeous um, colours. Um, you get a set of 24 with the Primas, whereas I've got the 30 set here with the with the Neo Colours. Um, I think they come in sets of, of 12 is the smallest, right up to 160 or something ridiculous. I think 30 is more than enough though. There's um, plenty of colour choice in a set of 30. So I just continue to build up the colours until I'm happy with the look. So now I'm just using a Stabilo All pencil, which is um, another um, water reactive, water soluble pencil, just to add some detail to my bird and just to outline it and, and frame it as well. I just really like the look that this gives. Um, it tidies up um, any over overhang that you've got from your water soluble um, wax crayons as well, um, and just defines it on the page. I'm just adding a bit more colour where I think it needs it, um, focusing on the beak just to define that the way um, I want it. And then of course I want to add some white reflection to the bird's eye as well. So I use a white Posca paint pen um, just to add a couple of, of dots. Um, and that just, you know, that, that reflection just makes all the difference in, in my opinion. And now I want to add the branch. Now, of course, I could have stamped this in using some black paint, but I've got my Stabilo All Pencil already there at hand. And so I just decide to um, colour it in. Your stencils are a lot more versatile than you probably think they are, and they're great for using with your colouring pencils or, you know, felt-it pens as well as just paint. And so I just add my branches just to define it. The Stabilo All um, is nice and rich rich and, and creamy so you know perfect for, for this. I just want to finish my branch off by adding some blossom. The blossom has just finished here. Um, we had high winds last week and it blew everything away um, but it's so pretty isn't it? It really is. We've got lovely cherry trees right outside our bedroom window um, and the blue tits do actually sit on the branches. It's just absolutely wonderful. That's where Louis sits and perches and um, and just watches them <laughs> um, with, with rather hungry eyes I fear. And I'm using my Stabilo All Pencil again just to add some definition to those um, petals. I just used a peachy light pink coloured Neo Colour and of course I'm adding one to the right hand side as you can um, see here just to add a bit of balance. Just to finish the blossoms off, I bring out the Nouveau Drops in white and just add a few dots to the centre of the blossom. And as they dry as well, they, they crack. Mine have started to crack. I don't know why that is, but I really like that effect. 
it's the next day and I want to continue with my page there's the bird I did yesterday and I've got a confession I've been to the motorcycle museum the craft fair was on um, today and I've got some distress oxide um, sprays I wasn't going to but I just couldn't resist I've bought three they were on offer for um, three four fifteen pounds five pounds each which I think is quite a good price we don't get the deals that you get um, in the US we don't get the discount vouchers or discount codes for you know 40 50 percent off so you know craft supplies are um, considerably more expensive especially um, if they're imported I know we're lucky you know in comparison to people in Australia and New Zealand where I think it's even even more expensive but I do want to use these on my page I am pretty sure that this background here is distress oxide anyway you can see that I'm protecting it with um, some kitchen towel as well because I don't want it to go onto the page that um, I did yesterday now before I go any further I want to do a shout out to Suzanne Britton because whilst I was on one of the stores um, in the motorcycle museum somebody said Nina Nina Ribena, um, and it was Suzanne Britton. Um, she recognised me. Well, she said she recognised my hands. Um, and so it was just absolutely wonderful to meet you. I often wonder if I'll meet people that um, that I know from YouTube or Facebook at the Motorcycle Museum. I mean, Angie Beaumont, for instance, for example, um, I know lives not very far away. And I often wonder if I'll see, you know, people like that there. But, you know, I've never bumped into anybody um, so far. So I'm going to start off with some wilted violet and I'm going to try and hold it at a bit of a distance because I don't want to completely sort of overkill my page. I love that. Oh my goodness me, that's gorgeous. Um, I just want to add some additional colour um, and I'm thinking I should go in with some peacock feathers. So that one there was wilted violet. This is peacock feathers. In fact, do I want to do that? I've given these a good shake, by the way oh that's beautiful 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 um and next i'm going to come in with my third color which is twisted um citron i've chosen these colors wisely these are the ones that um i thought i would use the most i you know cannot afford to invest in all of the colors um that um, ranger have have brought out there we go and I'm going to leave that be and just look at this napkin as well so I'm going to give this a good dry now with my heat tool got, um, a line here um, and that's really bugging me so I'm just going to add some of my neo colors here roughly scribbly and where's my paintbrush gone here we go I'm just going to activate those with with water just to try and blend um, that in um, and that looks much much better already because we just looked as if we had this strange sort of you know white line this white blob let's just try and blend that out um, a bit better that's much much better happy with that now pretty that's just gorgeous i just love that um i want to emboss some dandelions on this page here i've got um this stamped image i think this was from um craft stamper magazine um although i'm not entirely sure it's brand new i've never used it before um i've got um another dandelion one as well which has um, been well used um, but this is the one i want to use today and where do i want that to go um let's have it here i might add um more of these i'm not sure i'm going to start off with one so there we go and i'm using a cutting mat uh, behind me as well um just to add some um stability sorry i lost my train of thought i was trying to find my embossing powder so there we go that's white um embossing powder i'm adding here let's oh, tip that off there we go oh that's gorgeous right okay so i'm just going to um heat set this with my heat tool i'm obviously going to have to extend the stem as well love how um, nice and bright and white that is and I do want to add another one so I'm just going to re-ink my stamp and where shall we have the next one um, I think somewhere here like like this just go for it don't think about it Nina just do it there we go 
and then again I can um, add some embossing powder where's it gone I'm knocking everything over here I've knocked my paintbrush jar over nearly <laughs> oh good grief so let's um let's do it like this and if you end up with any um, bits, stray bits that you don't want, just brush them away. Um, obviously, I'm going to need to sort out the stems. So I'm going to dry this with my heat tool as well. I need to extend the stems and I'm going to use um, my Versamark um, watermark pen, um, which will just make life a lot easier for me. So I can just continue the stem down like this we'll see how this looks um, I'm just going to add some of the embossing powder where I've added the pen um, and if it's too wide or you know it doesn't quite work out then that's fine because I can um, brush any excess away actually that's not too bad I quite like that so I'm going to um, heat set that with my heat tool if you want to fill in any extra bits just to disguise it then of course you can go in with a, a bit more I am actually quite happy with that, but you know me, the ultra perfectionist always. Right, okay, so let's tap that off, that's better. Um, that's just made a big difference to me. Perhaps I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, wrong end. I've got, to, on these pens, you've got um, a, a fat end, can you see? Um, and a fine end as well. These are just so, so useful to have in your stash. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing here. Let's continue this on. So we'll see how that looks. And again, I'm just going to tip my powder on and see what we end up with. And you can see that this time round, um, it's much fatter than I would like it to be um, at the end. So I'm just going to grab a fine paintbrush if I can find one. Here we go, that one will do. Um, and I'm just going to brush some, some of it away like this until I end up with a, a wispy shape like I've got on this side that I'm happy, happy with. There we go. I love the simplicity of this page and to tie in with um, the colours that are in the opposite page and the purple that I put down here I'm just going to add a bit of a border like this I want to try and keep it um, simple whoops I didn't mean to do do that let's wipe that off there we go just want it um, on the on the edge like this and I'm going to activate this then with um, a paintbrush I can blend it with my finger if I if I want to but I think I want to activate it with a paintbrush I had one there a second ago what have I done with it here we go and that will just frame my piece you know how I I like to do that And that already looks much, much um, better. So again, I'm just going to go around the edge like, like this. Because this page is smaller, I'm just being careful that, um, you know, I don't add too, too much. There we go. And then I'm just going to grab my damp baby wipe. There we go. And just go around the edges and that will just frame, frame that nicely how that looks um, but what I'm not liking I've got something I want to do with this page here but I'm not liking this at all so again I'm going to bring in the distress oxides because of course they're new when I want to play with them um, so I'm just going to cover up these areas here like that um, just so that I don't get it where I don't want it and I'm just going to come in again and just add Add some colour and let's see what we end up with. I'm going to hold it from a distance again. I don't like that pink. Um, let's keep going. Uh, 
and we'll add some of the really do you know i think i'm going to stop there i really 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 like that and do you know what i'm going to do i'm going to add some water splatters as well so i've got my water bottle let's just um yeah i like that that looks like um some kind of tree i wonder if we could do something with that look how that's starting to marble i just absolutely love that now i think i'm going to zap this with my heat tool before it um before i lose it but i'm doing it on a really really gentle heat got the urge to just tip this and see what happens so i'm just going to let this drip it looks like a flower now i just love that let's just get that to oh. Ah, everything's falling apart get that to, to drip and so I'm just going to continue heat setting that I really like how that looks now oh my gosh just look how gorgeous that is that's just beautiful can you see this um, detail here I just love it and I feel that I want to do the same um, with the backs of these pages here so again Again, I'm just going to bring back uh, my tissue paper and let's add some more and do the same with this one here. Um, now, this time round, I'm going to go for the Distress Oxide in Peacock, Peacock Feathers. I want to hold that down so that I don't get any um, on the other, the other side. Um, oh, goodness me, how am I going to do this? Well, if, you know, some gets on there, then that, that's fine, isn't it? It doesn't matter leave that be and then i'm going to go in fact i just love that purple it's just beautiful <gasps> oh gorgeous and i'm going to go over it with the um twisted citron as well and i think i'm going to leave that be um no i'm not i'm going to do the same as i did before and spritz with water because that just gave that beautiful beautiful um, oxidized effect and let's just see um, what happens before it dries completely I've just got the urge to um, just splatter oh I love that that's just beautiful I love these I didn't think um, I resisted these for so long because I've got the um, distress oxide inks I was thinking do I really need them and then I saw them at the craft fair today and I thought I just I can't resist I'm sorry but I can't um, resist and I'm so glad that um, that I got them. Let's um, try and add a few splatters there. Look at the state of me. Good grief. I really like how that looks, but I've got the urge now to just spray with the purple to tie it in with this page here. So I'm just going to pop that back down, spray from a distance. And yeah, I really like that. And I think I'm going to do the same thing as I did before and just add some um, splatters, not too many. There we go, oh, I like that, that's just so pretty. Oh my goodness me, guys, I've had so much fun playing with these inks. Um, just look at that. Um, I just continued splattering and spraying um, because it bled through to the other side. I know that I've completely got rid of the circles that I had plans for, but you know, that's fine. You know, these things um, happen sometimes. Um, now, I feel that I want to do something with this page here, and I'm thinking um, that I can use the mop up page. I had a spillage, would you believe? I forgot to put the lid back on. Don't do this, you will waste your pen. Um, and it spilled luckily I didn't um, lose very much but um, I've mopped it up with this um, towel here and just look how gorgeous that is and so I just want to um, decoupage um, this part here onto the back of of this I'm just going to use my scissors just to um, cut the part that I want um, just because it's tight um, I want this to fit so there we go um, and then it's that part there that um, that I want. Isn't that just beautiful? I just love that so much. Um, so I think I want um, that part there. Do I? How do I want to do this? Yeah, I do want some white space. So I think I'm going to um, use use that part there. 
Um, that's lovely, isn't it? Napkin um, or um, kitchen towel is usually two or three ply. I've got a feeling this one is three ply. Yes, it is. So I'm just going to um, take the layers apart. I think um, that's the area I like. So I'm just going to use a glue stick. Add some glue, concentrating on the edges to make sure that it sticks properly. There we go. And where's it gone? I'm just going to glue that down. There we go. And then I can trim around the edges. And you know, the fact that I've got wrinkles, that's fine. That's just more more texture. So that's how that page um, looks. Um, isn't that just pretty? Do you know, I have ended up with some really, really pretty uh, backgrounds for future projects. Look at this one. Look how it's bled through to the back. You know, most of this is just copier paper. So of course, you know, it's very porous and um, the inks, being as strong as they are, have bled through to the back of the paper. And that's fine of course this one got completely um, ruined all the pattern the the circles I had on that um, because of course the previous page bled through but you know that's absolutely fine now, before I add a quote to my page I just want to add some white splatters to this left hand side here so I'm just going to um, secure this down with um, some paper clips just because it's too bumpy and just it just won't lay flat um, otherwise let me just grab another another clip there we go and then I'm just going to use my um, white Posca paint pen um, in fact actually I ought to um, just add a baby wipe or something underneath there as well just to stop stop it getting there that will do um, what have I done with my Posca paint pen and I'm just going to tap 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 just to get some white splatters um, just because I just want some more white and some brightness and you know just the illusion of those dandelions floating um, away I just love that now I've chosen a quote from the Dina Wakely scribbly bird set um, and I'm going to stamp it twice because I'm not sure um, which embossing powder I want to use I'm using embossing um, stamp pad and some embossing powder um, so let me just stamp this twice I'll well, in fact I'll stamp it once um, put the ink down I'm going to try black first <coughs> oh do excuse me um, so we'll try black black first and then I've got one of the um, Seth Apter um, inks as well so right got a few extra bits on this one tap them tap them off a bird does not sing because it has an answer it sings because it has a song so I'm just going to um, heat set this with my heat tool the first stamped image and um, as I say I'm going to do it again I really like um, how vibrant um, that is in black and you can see here that I'm using just a, a scratch old piece of cardstock as well um, you know don't like to waste my cardstock scraps and and this one is um, deep sea which is baked um, texture I ought to give it a shake really um, and this is one of the um, Seth Apter baked um, textures and this might not work it might not be um, strong or vibrant enough I don't know but um, you know until you can see them side by side sometimes it's really really difficult to to tell so again I'm just going to um, heat set this with my heat tool. They've both turned out and um, you know even now I'm not sure which one I like best. I think it's going to be the Seth Apter but what I want to do is cut um, these out into individual lines. So I'm just going to trim them with my scissors. Isn't it ridiculous? I've played around with this for absolutely ages and in the end I've decided on the black. Um, I've asked Sam's opinion as well because he's just walked through the door and he said no mum the black so the black it is so I'm just going to ink around the edges um, with some black stays on ink as well just to make it stand out even even more. So I'm just going to glue this down I've inked around the edges and I'm using um, Fabri-Tac that I've decanted into a fine nozzle bottle. Oh, whoops, Daisy. So just plonk it down, Nina. Don't overthink where it goes. It doesn't matter. 
Um, now I've been asked a question about my favourite glues and I am going to do a video um, because I use lots of different types of, of glues. Um, you know I've bought lots over the years and I've now got a list of my favourites and so I will share a video at a later date. Um, Fabri-Tac of course is one of them and also just decanting things into these fine nozzle bottles which was a tip that I got from Teresa Morgan um, and you know oh so much easier when it's um, decanted it really really is. What am I doing? Um, grabbing for the wrong piece of quote I'm trying to be random about this as you can um, see I love that love 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 beautiful so that's my finished page I'm just going to do one last thing but if you end up um, embossing or printing out extra quotes because you're not sure on colour don't throw them away keep those I'm just going to stick those back with my um, stamps for next time um, now I just want to darken up these edges even even more you know I like to do this um, let me just turn it round so that um, it's manageable for me. I'm going to use this darker colour, um, blue, Prussian blue, um, just on the absolute edge. So we've still got the purple. You know how I like my double edges. Um, and where's my uh, baby wipe gone? I'm going to dampen my finger just to blend it, just like this, just to you know define those edges and frame them even even more. That's my interpretation of this month's mood board. I just love that. It's just gorgeous. Um, really, really simple. I mean, nothing difficult about that at all. Um, of course, the backgrounds were there already and I've just simply added to them and then just used a couple of, um, well, a stencil and a stamp. Let me just show you these gorgeous Distress Oxide backgrounds that I've ended up creating through my play as well. I mean, this really <laughs> turned into a bit of a, a play session, didn't it? But I just love these um, and of course you know I'll be sharing what I end up doing with these at um, a later date that was the one that um, I did with the kitchen towel just love that um, and of course you know the other quote that I printed I'll be sticking back in with my stamps and I can use that for another another project so I hope you enjoyed the video today um, you know as always if you did I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and do let me know what you think in the comments below and I really look forward to seeing um, how everybody else decides to interpret the mood board this month and I hope this has shown you as well that you don't have to take the mood board literally um, that it really is open to interpretation so take care everyone and I'll see you all again soon bye for now